I'm sorry, that was so lame. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to be doing some more broke meals. Meals that I made growing up when we had nothing in the house to eat. All right. This is going to be fun. And a couple of these I haven't had in a long time. Like, it's been a long time. And, yeah, it's been a long time. But I'm going to share it with you because it's fun to just show what we had when times were tough. And, you know, let's just do this. Because this stuff is actually really good. And I'm really upset that I haven't made it in a long time. It's no secret. I've told you guys plenty of times. I grew up kind of poor. You know, there were times when we were scraping the barrel for dinner. It happens. And it happened in my childhood. And you know what? I blame that for making me so daggone frugal. That it's almost a fault, but you know, it's fine. Um, but yeah, that's probably how I come up with, with all these ideas that I come up with. And I can stretch a dollar like no other baby because of that. And I'm thankful for it. Don't feel bad for me. I'm thankful for it because it taught me how to be, you know. So, I'm going to share with you some of my favorite childhood struggle meals today. Kind of a part two to this video. If you haven't seen that one, go watch it. It's got four of our struggle meals that I had when I was growing up. And I will leave a link to that in the comments down below. So, this is going to be fun. Buckle up, guys. Because I'm about to take you. I'm sorry. That was so lame. I, was, I had this whole bit in my head. like I was going to be like, I'm going to take you back in time. But I'm too lame to make it cool. Anyways. <laughs> so, the first one... Okay, everybody has these. I'm sure you guys have these all the time. It, it, we have these. But when I was thinking of the struggle meals that we had growing up, this one popped in my head first. Let me tell you why. So, <laughs> my dad would keep pepper jack cheese. He, and I, I don't know why. It was just something that was always in the fridge, like pepper jack cheese. You know what? It could have been old. I don't know. All I know is when we had a couple tortillas in the cabinet, we went looking for my dad's pepper jack cheese. Okay. And we made pepper jack cheese quesadillas. Now, I know. You're like, cheese quesadilla, brook. Everybody has that. I know. But I'm just sharing with you guys the struggle meals from my childhood. And this is something that we did. So, my dad, for some reason, always kept pepper jack cheese. And I want to... He never ate it. I'm thinking about it right now, and he never, it, just, it was always there. Like, when there was nothing else in the house, there was pepper jack cheese. Like, he would buy it, and he wouldn't eat it. Maybe he bought it because he knew we would eat it in the tortillas at the end of the month. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but it was always there. So, this was a struggle meal that I loved, and I, and I loved this, okay? And it was especially great if Dad had got some hot sauce and there were some hot sauce in the refrigerator, okay? So, we are going to make the best struggle meal from my childhood. Super easy. Meals to eat when you're broke. Um, who broke? We're going to have pepper jack cheese quesadillas, baby. That ain't, well, I mean, it's kind of broke, but it's good. Also, if we didn't have any oil in the house, we would just zap this baby in the microwave. Kind of like a old school Taco Bell cheese roll up before Taco Bell made the cheese roll ups. You know, they got the idea for me and my sister. <laughs> Since I did it both ways, we're going to do it both ways and we're going to have the kiddos taste it and see how they like it. Not Colin because he can't handle Pepper Jack. It's quesadilla time. I got some oil in that pan, like, before it heats up, wham. Pepper jack cheese is the best quesadillas. Nobody can change my mom. 
Let's get that going. And while this is going, I'm gonna do the same thing as zap it in the microwave. Boom. I'm done in like two seconds. Alrighty. Like, like this is totally crazy, right? What I just made, it's unheard of. <laughs> Pan, microwave, ooh, oof. That was almost a mess. Like I said earlier, it was a good day when we had some hot sauce in the refrigerator. We didn't keep hot sauce because my family's a bunch of weenies when it comes to heat, but not this family. We like it. So, back in the struggle days in my childhood, this was our vegetable. <laughs> and also, pepper jack cheese that has peppers in it. That was our vegetable, you know? We didn't care about having a balanced diet when we were hungry, right? So, I'm gonna put a little bit of a Valentina to dip it in. Oh, my. Valentina with both. Now let's get Ryder and Brayden in here. I mean, it's okay. They're gonna love it. It's Kathea. But, you know, this is just the struggle meal that I love growing up. Ryder. Okay, so what we do, we have a microwave version okay. and a pan version. Okay. And you gotta try it plain and then try it with the Valentina. This is what I always ate with Emily when it was the end of the month and our food stamps ran out. I'm not focused. It will focus. Oh, it's focused. <laughs> okay, microwave. No, that's a treat, baby. Did you use pepper jack? I did. I've been sitting here saying pepper jack cheese case did. Okay, now you gotta dip it in. Pretty good. You gotta dip it in the Valentino. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. I prefer it without the Valentino. Do you? Yeah. It's weird. It was always a good day when we had some hot sauce in the house. And it's making my nose run. But, struggle meal, yep, quite busting. When it was the end of the month and we <laughs> ran out of food, this kept us going. Okay. It's really good. That's the microwave version. When we left up and we had oil or butter at the end of the month, we got to make it in the pan and make it crispy. I know. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's good. Scrum diddly, I'm just. Like, if I fed this to you guys, you wouldn't think it was a struggle now, would you? Mm. That's good. That's good. Still better, right? So, Valentino, it's better. Okay, that was my favorite struggle meal from when I was a child. Next, this is another favorite of mine. I think this video was just a bunch of my favorites. Now, you're gonna need a tater <laughs> and some butter, okay, and, <laughs> and some sliced cheese, like plastic cheese. You're gonna need that, and salt and pepper. So, we would always have a rogue potato left over, and this is what I would do to the potato when it was the end of the month. By the way, y'all, with this one, it was so good that I think I lived on this six months, and like daily for six months. <laughs> By the way, this is a microwave meal too because um, our parents wouldn't allow us to use the stove when they weren't in the home. And after school, we'd use a microwave, and this is how I would make it. You gotta get you a bowl, a microwave safe bowl that has a lid. I mean, I don't know if that's absolutely necessary. It's just how I always did it. Okay, so <laughs> you're gonna start dosing up your potato, your clean potato. Story time about this little one. I made this for Dusty when we first got together just cause it's all we had in the house. 
And he thought it was the best thing ever. He said I was the most amazing cook in the entire world just because he tried this. So, um, yeah. It's cheese in a tater. I mean, how can you not love a cheese in a tater? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> we are going to... Yeah. What makes it so good is that you use a lot of butter. Now, mind you, we made this at the end of the month when we actually had butter left over. So this was an every now and again struggle meal. I'm not kidding you. I, that's four tablespoons of butter in this one potato, but it's necessary, okay? Trust me. I mean, I thought it was necessary back then. I'm just doing what I did, okay? I'm just doing what I did. It's a lot of butter, I know. Salt, pepper, Maybe another little pinch of salt because it's a tater. Don't put the lid on and secure it. You want to leave it loose. And we're going to put this in the microwave for five minutes. This is hot. <laughs> so, there's something about a baked potato that's cooked like this in the microwave. It, it smells totally different. If you know, you know. And when I just took, I haven't made a baked potato like this in so long and I took it out of the microwave just all my childhood just came rushing back okay what I'm gonna do now stir it up we're not done if it's a little soft I'll go ahead and put the cheese in it but it's not soft yet kind of thick okay I'm gonna put it in for about three more minutes and then we'll do the next step ay yeah yeah that's hot yeah, 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 that's hot. Oh my, oh hot, we hot. She's sizzling. Do you see the sizzle? Okay, there's off. Now, the next step. We're gonna throw some plastic cheese in here. Well, I mean, this isn't wrapped in plastic. This is the American that isn't wrapped in plastic, but it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. We ain't done, baby. We're going to zap this for two more minutes. Looks like that. I know. Cheese and taters. Well, Brooke, this was a struggle meal, y'all, and it's bomb, okay? It's bomb. And it's got to be made this way or it's just not as good. All right? And I know we had to cook the potatoes in that butter. We're not going to eat all that butter, in case she was wondering. See. Take a minute and look at the beauty of them taters. Just simple cheesy taters. But let me tell y'all, this is like a delicacy. <laughs> this is so good. I haven't had this in forever and I'm very excited. And I'm telling you, when you do it in the microwave, it tastes different than the oven or stove top. It tastes better. It tastes different. I'm just telling you. God, trust me on it. All right. It's not your fault of ruin everything. Mm -hmm. They look good. Let me get the boys in here so they can give it a go. Get a tater. They're hot. Love taters. Now, this is what I'd eat when we'd only have a couple taters left at the end of the month. All right. And it has to be cooked in the microwave. Microwave. Be right back when they're cool because it is a tater, you know. Get ready. One, two, three. Very tasty. I want another. <laughs> Didn't you blow yourself away? How do we feel about this potato? Yeah, we boiled these taters for a good five minutes. I mean, no, I didn't even taste it. Burn off all my cake, but. <laughs> you smell one. Pick up a tater. Okay, so this brings back memories. I got so addicted to these when I was young that when I would go to stay on up with Mamaw, um, I would make these. And me and her would watch Jack and the Beanstalk, the Costello and Abbott version. Have you guys seen that? 
it, it was like right when color TV first came out. And it was my favorite thing to watch. And me and Mamma would eat these baked potatoes with cheese from the microwave. And we would watch Abbott and Costello. Mm. Um, Jack and the Beanstalk. That's pretty good. You can taste it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, if Mamma had it, we would put the imitation bacon bits on top too. It was bomb. A little mega good Mm-hmm. Can't go wrong with good potato. Good potato. Good meal to eat when you're broke. When Color TV first came out. No. <laughs> no. Really no. It was an old TV show that was made back in like, I don't know, 40s. I don't know. When Color TV just came out. It was born in the 40s? No. <laughs> <laughs> Next. I'm upset at myself that I forgot about this one. And this is like the, this is the game changer for this meal. Ah, just hear me out. Okay. So, when you're broke, you got random pantry items. You got a couple eggs. You got a little bit of milk. You got a little bit of sugar and some flour. Maybe a dash of vanilla. And a little bit of cinnamon. You can make you a Dutch baby. You know what a Dutch baby is? A German pancake. Is it authentic? No idea. But here in the States, we call it a German pancake, and it's a Dutch baby. And normally, you make it in a cast iron, but you can make it in anything, really. And it's like a gigantic pancake, and it puffs up and gets all big. So, that was one thing that we made when we were broke, and it is delicious. And it goes so far. So, we're going to make a Dutch baby. But... Remember I told you guys that story last time? Um, my mom tried a homemade syrup and it was bad, so I made it my life's mission to make some homemade syrup that actually tasted good. Well, <laughs> this is what we do <laughs> when we did not want homemade syrup that we didn't like. If we had an orange left over, like we'd buy a big sack of oranges or something. If we'd have an orange left over, we would make orange sugar. Like, you... I'll show you. Let's get to this because I'm excited because I haven't had it forever and I dropped my orange. Preheat your oven to 425. Get you a cast iron pan if you have one. If you don't have one, it's okay. You can choose like a casserole dish or something. It's fine. And we're going to throw in a half a stick of butter, sticker in the oven, and let it melt. While that's melting, let's get this Dutch baby going. We're gonna need four eggs. You can actually do this with three eggs if you wanna take a fourth of the milk out and a fourth of the flour out. But y'all know I got chickens. I got four eggs. We have our four eggs here. We're gonna add three fourth cups of milk, three fourth cups of self-rising flour. A tablespoon, I'm eyeballing it, of sugar. I'm gonna do a couple shakes of cinnamon. A dash of vanilla. Pinch of salt. And it's gonna be thinner than the normal pancakes we have here in America. So don't freak out if you think it's too thin, it's, it's perfect. My butter is melted. So I'm going to pour in my Dutch baby mix. I'm gonna pop this in the oven and I'm gonna keep an eye on it. And when it gets puffy and big, I'm gonna pull it out. Let's make that orange sugar now. I wanna just get you a grater and zest a little bit. Of the orange skin, orange zest. <laughs> I don't have a zester. I just use like the little tiny cheese grater. It works. I've always did it like this. Okay. That should be enough. I'm gonna put like half a cup of sugar in here. And the best part about this is 
You still have an orange to eat. Just wanna mix it together. And your sugar will turn orange and it will have the best orange flavor. Looks like this. Seems kind of fancy, but it's not. Sometimes, sometimes y'all ask me, Brooke, your family like everything you make? You ever mess anything up? Yeah, all the time. Today being one of those days. My Dutch baby didn't puff. <laughs> Sorry. It's only happened to me a handful of times. It didn't puff. I can make a Dutch baby. I, I promise you. I make Dutch babies. They're good. And they puff. And they're beautiful. Today's Dutch baby didn't puff. And I'm sitting here wondering why. And I don't know. <laughs> I didn't. Maybe I didn't let the butter get hot enough or something. Anyways, it still tastes the same. Here's my flat as a flitter Dutch baby. But this isn't the star of the show, okay? The star of the show is this. Now, I would normally, like, okay, I'm just going to redo this. It's, it's not pretty. No, I'm not going to redo it. This is real life. Okay? This is how it's working. My Dutch baby turned out ugly, but it's still a pancake. And we're just going to sprinkle the orange sugar on top. And it's going to get all melty. The comments below, someone's going to tell me what I did wrong. And I will be like, duh, Brooke. Because I'm, I'm telling y'all, I can make a Dutch baby. I, I promise I can make a Dutch baby. Might be my iron skillet. I don't know. It is a newer iron skillet. But anyways... Me questioning my Dutch baby skills all night. <laughs> my ugly flat Dutch baby. Never been so disappointed in myself. I'm low key wondering if it wasn't the eggs, because one of my eggs were gigantic. Or maybe two of them were. And it wasn't really four eggs because it was so huge. Maybe that's why. Oh, I think it was. I really do. I think it was, and I think it made it not rise as much because of my eggs were gigantic eggs. My Dutch baby didn't bubble. This is a Dutch baby. It's supposed to be a big bubble. But I think because I used a gigantic egg, it kind of had the ratio off a little bit. It's fine. If you use normal eggs, it should be fine. I'm pretty sure that's the reason. Here's my Dutch babies that are flatter than a flatter. But it's probably still gonna taste like a Dutch baby. Ooh, oh, wow. Mmm. Mm, it is. It did taste just like a Dutch baby. Very good. Ooh, nice. How do we feel about the Dutch baby orange sugar? Oh, yeah, I'm good. Me too. That is a fantastic meal to eat when you're broke. It's it's really good. But remember to watch your egg ratio. Use normal size eggs, not Albert Eggsteins. The last meal to eat when you're broke for this video. You got some leftover tortillas? You got some rando eggs? You know what we're doing. You know already, probably. We're gonna make some toad in the hole with tortillas and not bread. So what you're gonna do Fold your tortilla in half, rip, eat it. You got a, you got a hole in your tortilla. All right, we've got some butter in the nonstick pan. That's too much butter to take you out. I'm gonna throw my little tortilla down. Crack an egg. Make sure that yolk stays in that hole. Salt the egg. Pepper the egg. 
cook the egg. Now when I made this, I would let the yolk cook all the way through because I don't like a runny egg, but the boys love runny eggs. So I'm gonna cook this one to where the egg yolk is still runny. Ready, set, flipper. Still runny, ready, set, boing. Toad in the whole tortilla style. What do you feel about this struggle meal that we used to have? Well, let's see. We do toad in the hole all the time, but I don't think I've ever made it for him in a tortilla. I told you they love runny egg. <laughs> I like it. I love this, but I like to cook my egg all the way through, so that's why I'm not trying it because I don't like the run. Here, break. Give it a go. Good. Yeah. Nice. Really good. Alrighty guys, there you go. Four more of our meals to make when you're broke. I really ate all four of these when I was broke, as a joke. It's just, it's how it is sometimes, you know? And this stuff is still pretty cheap. A pack of tortillas at the Dollar Tree is a dollar twenty-five, baby. And eggs have gone down. They're less than, I think they're a dollar eighteen for a dozen in my area right there you got 12 toad in the holes for 250 so it's still pretty cheap to eat all of these struggle meals i showed you in this video and did i say they were delicious because they are they're mega good especially the dutch baby i know she ugly i know she's ugly but let's blame albert eggstein on the incorrect ratio to egg per mix But it started to show that orange sugar is so good. You don't have syrup or anything, and you need something, or it's even really good on biscuits. It's so good on biscuits. That stuff is a winner. Pretty thing good. All right, guys. I will see you next video. If you haven't seen the first part to this, Remember, I'm going to leave it in the comments below so you can go back and watch that one for the other struggle meals or meals to make when you're broke. I love you guys. Remember, as always, be positive, kind, and happy, and let others be happy, and I'll see you next video. I love you. Bye.